Thank you so much, April. And again, you don't want to miss those newsletters. It's always for me an encouragement. It's like, oh, yes, God is doing something. Not just here, but everywhere on the world and changing lives amazingly. And the reason why those newsletters are important is because like them and any organization that works in the kingdom of God, prayer is not an option. <laughs> you have to understand prayer is not an option. Prayer is a must because we work within the spiritual realm. And there's a lot of captivity in that aspect where like Satan doesn't want to let go of this, right? But God is for us. And so we pray. We partner not just, you know, to spread the word. We partner financially. Yes, part of your tithes and offerings goes to this commitment to be also missional. But then your partner goes into prayer as well. And I think out of all those three, prayer is the most important right? So I invite you to please continue to pray and remember, right? Even if you get that newsletter and say, oh, I don't have time to read it, at least say a prayer though, right? It's like, hey, I just, oh yeah, there is, they just sent me the weekly newsletter or maybe the daily one, but even if it's a daily one, pray for them and lift them in prayer. So we're going to do that right now. And if you join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for just the work that Empowering Lives of the National is doing in East Africa, and I just love it, Lord God, that at the end of the day, the light shines on you, Jesus. It's all about you, and we're so grateful for the work and the volunteers and the people that they're empowering, Lord God, to just bring healing into this world, and no more pain, and no more division, and no more suffering, Lord God, and this is what your kingdom of God is about, and we pray that you would continue to give wisdom and strength and resources, Father, that you would pull along other partners and churches to understand the great work that the Holy Spirit is doing in this land. And Father, we ask for strength and just, Lord God, for every person that goes and shares this good news, Father, that your Spirit would go mightily, Lord, and just break down those walls and those barriers. Heavenly Father, we ask for your continued presence, Father, to also protect. We know that this is dangerous sometimes because there's so many things tied into this, Lord God. But we pray for your safety around them at all times, Lord God, that you would shine their paths, they would not stumble, but that you would empower them, Father, to walk steadily and firmly in this path that you've given them, Lord God. And we ask for their protection and their well-being and their shalom. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's awesome, and thank you once again for joining us. Um, we do continue to talk as we are focusing on missions in the kingdom of God. We're going to be talking about empowered to shine in the kingdom of God. Now, you cannot talk about missions in the kingdom of God or just the kingdom of God altogether without talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen? Okay, you don't sound convincing. I hope you do afterwards, right? <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the one that empowers us to be light in this world. Yes, you remember this great commission, right, from Matthew 28 verses, uh, in verse 19 and 20. It says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Yet you have to understand this very important thing. You cannot do genuine discipleship without the help and the work of the Holy Spirit. You can't. And God doesn't expect it either, right? He understands the essential role of the Holy Spirit for this kingdom mission to happen for us to really go and make disciples and help people understand and obey the commands that jesus left for us we need the help of the holy spirit that line at the end of matthew 28 where it says and surely i am with you always to the very end of the age it's no doubt a reminder for us right that god's faithful presence in his church is important but it's also a reminder that we can't do this without God's faithful presence. We can't do it. Keep in mind also that one of Jesus' last words, this, this was um, according to the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus' last words. But then when you look at Luke, right, the Gospel according to Luke, one of Jesus' last words was not the Great Commission. 
Luke does mention the Great Commission in a different way. He says, now you have to go and change hearts and lives and teach about the forgiveness of sins, right? In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he tells them this in Luke 24, 49. Look, I am sending to you what my Father promised, but you are to stay in the city until you've been furnished with heavenly power. I love this version, the gospel according to Luke, because you have this Jesus telling them this great commission, and then Luke doesn't end with the great commission. Luke ends with something very important in the kingdom of God. He says, and then you have to understand this. You're going to receive power from heaven. And that's awesome. Of course, we know that Luke or Jesus is referring to the promise of the Holy Spirit being furnished, right, with heavenly power. And you start wondering, what does this power look like, right? Can I have some of that power? How do you purchase it? No, you cannot purchase it. Sorry. But what does it do? What do I do with it, right? And so the book of Acts begins. Now, Luke and Acts are written by the same author, right? So it's one continued story. Luke ends in chapter 24, but he continues, right, in Acts. So the book of Acts begins to give an answer to that, of what that power from heaven looks like. And it continues to shape that narrative and the narrative of the gospel that is kingdom-minded. So this making disciples of all nations with heavenly power really begins to take shape when you get into the book of Acts. And it becomes really an eye-opening witness of what the Holy Spirit does and what it looks like to see the Holy Spirit in action. So, um, if, if we had a modern version conversation between the disciple and the Holy Spirit, right, from the book of Acts, it would look something like this, right? The Holy Spirit would say, hey, disciple, come here. Look at them. And so the disciple looks and says, hey, the kingdom of God belongs to them also. And the disciple says, nah, really? And the Holy Spirit says, yes, I want you to go and tell them the good news, and I'll show you. And then the disciple says, hmm, I'm not sure, but since you're the boss, okay, I'll go. And then the Holy Spirit says, okay, now watch this. And then boom, right, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And the disciple says, holy moly. And then the Holy Spirit says, no, 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 Holy Spirit, right? So that would be my version of the book of Acts. Now, this is just slightly paraphrased. I'm just kidding. It's exaggerately <laughs> paraphrased. But if you know the story, you know the story. And if you don't know the story, I'll show you where I got this uh, from. You're not going to find it in the text. In Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 36, and then 44 through 48, the Holy Spirit is telling them, right? Hey, Peter, the kingdom of God belongs to them also. Nah, yeah, go. Tell them the good news and I'll show you. Okay, since you'd say so, I'll go, right? And then when Peter goes, boom, he finds that they're filled with the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that when Peter gets into the house, right, he, I don't know, sometimes when he explains, it's almost as if he's trying to justify his presence, right? Because he knows he shouldn't be in this Gentile's house, right? And so he's trying to give this whole speech about like, oh, you know why I'm here because of this and that. And then in the middle of that, the Holy Spirit just cuts him off. and He's like, okay, Peter, enough. <laughs> Let me just show you, right? And I love it. It says in verse 34, then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. And the verses just continue about Peter talking. And then in verse 44, while Peter was still speaking, so they're just listening, right? These words, the Holy Spirit came down on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished. Wow that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. 
They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. You cannot do kingdom work without the presence of the Holy Spirit. And you have to say hallelujah after this passage because every one of us, I'm pretty sure here, are Gentiles, <laughs> right? Who have also received that gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will always know what the next step is for the kingdom of God to advance in the right direction. Always. The kingdom of God just needs people that will say, hmm, I'm not so sure, but since you're the boss, I'll go. Just needs that. Following Jesus, you have to understand, is living on a mission. Right? It's not two things that are separate is if you are following Jesus, you have a mission. If you call yourself a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are on a mission. When in heaven, you have to understand one thing. I see myself in heaven, and when I see myself in heaven, I'm going to be going around, and I'm going to be seeing familiar faces, right? Credentials of what you did in this world are not going to, it's not going to matter, right? You're not going to walk around with this badge and with this list of all these things that you have accomplished, right? Oh, here's Emmanuel Moon, um, served for 30 years, right? Possessed this many things and accumulated this much. No, you're not going to, you're only going to walk as you, right? But what's going to be amazing about being in heaven for me, I think, is you're going to be seeing people. And then when you see people that you know you had an encounter with, you're going to say this to God. You're going to say, God, I am so thankful I had the privilege to be led by the Spirit and say, I planted seeds in that person's life. And I was part of that. So you are part of why that person is in heaven. Do you understand? So that's the mission. And that's really what's going to count because nothing else you're going to be able to show off in heaven. I'm sorry. Right? Except for, wow, I planted seed on that person's life. I planted seed in that person's life. I planted seed. I actually led that person to Christ. That's what's going to count. And that's the mission. And it's so much bigger than what this world can offer. We are on a mission. This is one way the Holy Spirit empowers us. Right? Then there's this other way as well where we see more of that heavenly power being furnished in us. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 19, we read this. It says, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. You need power, especially power from the Holy Spirit to understand this. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the me measure of all the fullness of God. In a simple sentence, the Holy Spirit is what makes the Christian walk possible. The Holy Spirit is what makes the Christian walk possible. If you recall when Jesus spoke about the vine and the branches, you're going to probably remember one of those phrases that sometimes gets taken out of context, right? Where it says, without me, you can't do anything, right? So it's not like, you know, oh, I need Jesus to brush my teeth. No, not that kind of anything, right? The context comes from John 15, 1 through 5. And I want to revisit this because it's important. In John 15, 1 through 5, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is a vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branches that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. And the context, right? Without me, you can't do anything. So you begin to understand that bearing fruit, right, is actually a natural and normal aspect of this Christian walk, 
right? It's not an option. It's like, okay, I'm a, I'm a Christian. No, okay, since you're a Christian, you have an option. Do you want to bear fruit or just stay the same? It's like, no. If you're going to walk the Christian walk, you ought to bear fruit. And that bearing fruit is spirit-powered. Bearing fruit is spirit power. It doesn't happen on its own or in isolation or as if there were two separate paths. So it's not like this is a path where you abide in Jesus and then this is the path where you produce fruit. No, the same path where you abide in Jesus is the same path where you will bear fruit by the power of the Holy Spirit. So bearing this fruit that is spirit power takes place in the same path where we can learn to be more loving where we can learn to be more joyful, more at peace, more patient, more kind, and practice more goodness, and practice more faithfulness, and practice more gentleness, and practice more self-control. It's the fruit of the Spirit, right? Apart from that, you can't do anything effectively or well. If we remove ourselves from that path, we can't. So it is through the Holy Spirit that He chooses, right, to strengthen us and empower us that we may produce that fruit. The Holy Spirit is the one that creates that space in my life for faith to grow. The Holy Spirit is the one that also equips each one of us with gifts to help others grow in that faith as well. The Holy Spirit reveals the depth of God's love in me, right, in others. And the Holy Spirit is the one that fills my heart with God's love and truth that I may continue to bear fruit. The Holy Spirit shines my path, right? The Holy Spirit also allows me to shine so that others may follow the same path. The Holy Spirit wants to work with you. The Holy Spirit wants to work in you. The Holy Spirit wants to work through you. So ultimately, we're going to be talking about missions in the kingdom of God. You have to understand this. It comes down to letting the Holy Spirit have his way in you comes out to allowing the holy spirit to guide your life every day it comes down to being available every day and to say if the holy spirit is talking to you hmm i'm not sure <laughs> but since you're the boss i'll go and i pray right as we continue to understand that we who call ourselves children of God, we have a mission, right? We have purpose. We have meaning. And it's going to be something that, is, that has an eternal weight, right? And in that mission, in that mission of living, right, we have to understand the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that guides this. And it's just looking for people who will say, Hey, I know you're not always going to be, yes, all right, I'm going, right? No, I've been, right, I've moved from Bolivia to South Korea and from South Korea to the States, right? Every time, right, I felt the Holy Spirit telling me, hey, this is the direction, but in no way did I say I'm 100% sure. Trust me, I told the Holy Spirit, hmm, are you sure that's where you want me to go next? Because I don't know, but since you're the boss, Okay, I'll go, right? When I came to the foundry, trust me, it wasn't, yeah, let's go, Escondido. Where's Escondido? No, trust me, it was the same thing, right? Holy Spirit, go. Ah, hmm, I'm not sure, but since you're the boss, I'll go. And the Holy Spirit says, boom, right? I told you. There's not a day I regret being here. There's not a, there's not a day I regret following the Holy Spirit. You never will. Because the Holy Spirit always knows what's next in the kingdom of God. So I pray we follow. I pray that we listen. I pray that we let him have his way to empower us to shine in the kingdom of God. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, just for the amazing empowerment that you're doing in Eli, Lord God, and just in all the places that they set foot on, Lord. May it be blessed wherever they go. And we Thank you, Father, that you empower us here in this place, in this land, in this West Coast, in this North County, San Diego. Lord God, you have also called us to empower others here in this place. So I pray as we are led by this Holy Spirit, Lord God, we, we ask that you 
reveal to us what those next steps look like in our lives. We ask that you give us the willingness to say, Holy Spirit, have your way. And it's okay sometimes to not be sure and say, hmm, I'm not sure. But one thing we can be sure is that you never make a mistake. And so we ask, Father, that you continue to empower us with the presence of the Holy Spirit, that we may continue to do the mission in the kingdom of God. And we ask this, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen.